Hello, welcome to another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. This is Matt Bingle speaking. I'm one of the co-hosts and the editor for this particular episode. I'm recording this brief message to let you know that this episode is audio only. This means that there will be no video footage of Jake, Chris, myself, or our special guest this episode. However, we will still have images and graphics on the screen to help you visualize what we're talking about. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause, and we hope you enjoy the episode nonetheless. Hi, I'm Marty Monster from the Bingle Puppet Troop. You're watching the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it! <laughs> Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Happy here with us today. I'm your host, Jake Devenball. As always, our co-hosts, Chris McSpee and Matt Bingo. How you guys doing? Doing good. good as always. How are you, Jake? Yes. Yes. Awesome to hear. I'm doing great as always. Chris, what do we have for today? So once again, uh, happy you're here with us, everybody. Very excited about today's guest. Uh, we've had him on the show before. He's a great friend of ours. Um, I used to be on his show a couple years ago as a co-host and still occasionally help out here and there. Uh, you may know him as the host of the long-running podcast, the DJ Bob Show. And uh, since, you know, our podcast is celebrating its uh, second anniversary, we figured Ooh. we might as well have one of our guests back who's also Ooh. celebrating an anniversary for his podcast. Ooh. And Ooh. it's the wonderful DJ Bob Runkle. Bob, happy to have you here. It's... I hate you guys. You know, I'm kidding. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hey, Bob. Well, well, I hate you too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I work with you, so that's a problem. Oh, no, I know that's that's the that's the biggest problem I have. <laughs> I, we're, we're just getting, of course, wonderful to have you back here, Bob. This this feels weird for me because because oddly enough, the episode that you were here before was the episode before I debuted. Yeah. Oh, well, like, yeah. Wow! Wow! Right. Yeah, that that's 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 awkward. Okay, cool. But I oh, know. Uh... <laughs> oh, I. D- d- Yes, just as a brief note, this is uh, Bob's only the fourth returning guest we've ever had on the show. I know we just had one recently with Bruce Kim Noyle. I feel like I always come back. When... Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, you, fo- you folks have yeah. seen Bob on the show before, but in terms of being a guest, he's only the fourth returning guest we've ever yeah, had. Yeah, because he's, yeah, Bruce... he's, been, he's been a guest co-host once. Um, he's yep. come in to surprise guests on a few interviews. Um, and before, so before we start off with, you know, the questions and everything, I do just want to say, and I've, you know, mentioned this before, but Bob's the reason why I'm even into podcasting. Cause you know, like I said, I was a co-host on his show. So that really taught me a lot about podcasting. And so, yeah, you know, here we are. I think if, I don't know, I don't know if I'd be doing this if it wasn't for, you know, knowing you, Bob. You know, we all have those people that bring us to where we are and I'm glad that I could be that for you guys whenever I see you guys release a new episode and I say this to you guys all the time I feel like a proud dad because because not not everybody and you guys know me not everybody can do what you're doing at the speed and the magnitude of what you guys are doing and I'm so proud of you guys thank you thank Thank you that, that means a lot thank you yeah, thank you so much. You know, this kind of started as kind of like a pandemic-ish kind of thing because, you know, we were all still kind of stuck at home. So we, you know, had a lot of free time. So we kind of decided, you know, maybe it's time for me to get back into the podcasting game. So, all right. So to kick off this interview, so for those who don't know you or haven't seen our uh, previous interview with you could you kind of introduce yourself a bit to our audience and what you do 
Oh, I'm giving my I'm giving my elevator pitch now. That's right. Yes. Yes. Yes, you are. Yes, yes you are. Yes, it's your <laughs> turn. It's your turn to do it. Yes, on, it's like, yes, on his show, he uh, he asks uh, guests to give like elevator pitches of themselves, and now it is Bob's turn to give us an elevator. Pitch. And, I, and I always say, if it if it gets stuck, it's okay. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Um, I am DJ Bob Runkle. I have been a pop culture nerd pretty much my entire life. What a lot of people, what a lot of people don't know is when I was born, um, my heart rate numbers were not that great. But whenever they put a radio on, a radio near my bed, like they would, all the machines would recalibrate and everything would be good with my heart and my vitals and stuff like that. So, um, music is literally in my blood and pop culture is literally in my blood. Um, then I get after years of collecting CDs and watching TV and, you know, loving all that stuff, I discovered this radio show on AOL called Radio KOL. And it was this wacky, irreverent show. And I would call into it so much that I was given the name DJ Bob by my mentor and hero, DJ Rick Adams. What then prompted me to be on different radio stations, got fired from those, <laughs> and uh, started my own thing. That was 13 years, you know, now. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, since you're a return guest, how does it feel to be back on the show? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very terrible, right? No, nice. I, no, it's so good because I know, I know that I've inspired you and to see how you guys carry yourself is such an inspiration to me and it makes my content better knowing that i've helped you so it's good to be here ah i mean it's a lot like, likewise 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 indeed yes now before getting into podcasting how did you grow up you you just say we've talked about this many times your childhood was very very interesting and i think i think you brought this up the last time you were on with us but what was your childhood like, and how did you grow up? My childhood was interesting because some would call it sheltered, but I would call it a blessing. Um, I couldn't really play outside that much as a kid, but I could listen to music and watch movies and and um, watch TV. And what's interesting about me is that. From an early age, I was consuming content that I shouldn't have been consuming. Like, I, at, you know, at the age of three, I was listening to the Spice Girls and the pop music of the day because of my two older sisters, one, one being a seven-year age difference. So, like, there is, I was born at the perfect time of pop culture that sort of late 90s ERL pop music boom of everything that was coming out at the time oh yeah and I loved it but because I had all that time because of the physical limitations I really absorbed everything and just loved it like I remember if I was, if I was good during school, if I didn't, you know, we go, we get very much a, well, like a, not, not like a baby, but like a, like if I was good in school, if I didn't act up, I would go to the mall the next weekend and get a CD. That was my reward. And back then, CDs weren't. Cheap. Oh, yeah, no. You'd be paying 18 bucks for a CD. I know, yeah. Like, my, my very first uh, 
CD, I think, was the first Play House Disney soundtrack. And yeah, it, uh, I obviously don't remember how much it was. It was so long ago, but I can imagine, yeah, it was must have been pretty expensive. One of my first albums that I got is before that I was buying CD singles, and mm-hmm. they were like three ninety nine. They were kind of okay. But the yeah. first album that I remember buying was the Radio Disney Jam 2 compilation. Oh, yes. Love those. And the second one is interesting because it exposed me to music like Queen and AC and the Sunshine Band, but it also had the the Britney Spears and the pop stuff that I love. So it was like this, this, it was one of the best albums to be exposed to, like all different types of stuff and really love the content. And really loved the radio element of it, too. It was a really good gateway into what I do. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of uh, Radio Disney, because we've, we've talked about this before as well, but you were pretty, you know, avid listener to uh, Radio Disney. So would you say kind of growing up listening to that played a huge part in inspiring oh, yeah. you to kind of start your podcast? Totally. Well, I... What a lot of people don't know is, and I've mentioned this more as time has gone on, my podcast was a radio show. It was me being a radio DJ. Like, one of the things that Matt and I share a love of is American Top 40. And and just all the radio bits and all the fun stuff with Casey Kasem and people like that. Yep. Who? Um, and oh yeah. I, 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 they, uh, I love Casey Kasem. But, love Casey Kasem. But the idea of playing a song and hitting the post, as they say, which is talking right before the vocal hits in, that is so satisfying. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> yeah. There have been times where Matt and I have been on a phone call and I just do that for fun. I yeah. go back to my radio room and you know, Radio Disney was an interesting thing because they had such an influence on me. Like I remember I was listening one day and BB Good was promoting the new Radio Disney Jams album at the time. In like February of 2001, and she was like, Buy me, buy me, see the Target now. And we were on the road right near a Target. <laughs> and, oh my gosh. And, <laughs> and we're saying, Oh my gosh. So then, wow. In my little chipmunk, secure voice, I said, <laughs> You heard her. Can we go to the store now, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> so then I bought it. Seriously. Oh, my <laughs> God. So it's, like, oh. it's always been in my sort of DNA, really, just this world of pop culture. And it really saved me from, like, just feeling alone and feeling sheltered because I had this special gift that other kids didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So, you, Chris brought up in your introduction, you have your own podcast, which is also celebrating an anniversary. The DJ Bob yeah. Show is celebrating its 13th anniversary this month as we are celebrating our second anniversary this month. Yeah, yeah. Yes. For people for people who have been living under a rock the past 13 years, can you share what inspired you to, to create the DJ Bob Show? Oh, I want to talk to Pat for it. You said he's living in there? Okay. Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, well, what man. inspired me? What inspired me was I brought it up a little bit in my elevator pitch or my introduction is um getting fired. 
I and Bingo, this had a full circle moment for you as well. So like. I worked for a radio station, and it was run by this college kid who, let's be honest, didn't know what he was doing. And I mentioned, I mentioned a fast food restaurant on the air when I shouldn't have, and he fired me. And it, it, it really, it really hit me hard. Because it was the first time, the first sense of rejection I'd ever gotten from anything creative. And at 14, when you get rejected, even by a friendship, you're rough. You're having a rough time, let alone a, a job. And, and the reason why I say it's full circle is Bingo, do you know who fired me? Uh, I know you brought it up before, but I don't remember, remember who. DJ. Oh, oh yeah, that's... Ever. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, <laughs> and, and that is full circle. And last year... Yes. DJ brought me on to put together a Christmas special for his children's radio station, which Uh Matt had played a big part in. I Um, did. Yes, I did. So, Very good special. Yes, it it was. We could have been enemies after that, but we stayed (laughs) friends after that firing, and I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that... That special was so much fun to do, and let me tell you, it was, it was really, really interesting. Uh, I guess I could get behind the scenes of this if you. Okay, I will go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, last last Christmas, um, you we had done a heart. You gave me your heart last Christmas. I. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> um, we had done a. Uh, Christmas special last year, um, this past Christmas, I should say. Um, it was uh, it was a wonderful special, and uh, it, it was a it was an all star cast too. Like it was, oh yeah, we had some wonderful names mm-hmm. be a part of this Absolutely. amazing special, including yeah. uh, uh, previous Chris guests, Phillips. Chris Phillips, who was the voice of Face for a decade. Uh, Chris Thomas Hayes was in it too, and Chris Phillips came back from the first. That's right. Yeah, when we did, right? He had, yeah. he had yes, he had done a uh, uh, Christmas special. What in twenty nineteen? Yeah, I think. Yeah, that, uh, that was a lot of fun too because I got to voice one of the elves. Um, in in the spe- in the special we did last year, I was more of like additional background kind of voices. But it was still fun to do because you know, like Matt said, you know, yeah. it's amazing. It really was. Ass, it, it was, was really it was fun. Amazing to cast do run throughs, and it was fun. yes, it was it was so fun. Let me let me think of who else we had on. We had uh, Chris, as you mentioned, Chris Thomas Hayes, T- Tara Schaefer, previous guest. Yeah, Sid was Sid was in it. Sid was in it. Yep, and it was and and of course yours truly and Marty Monster back there. Um, Marty, yeah, Marty had a big role in it. I was surprised that he did, <laughs> legitimately, because we, uh, our original producer, uh, had backed out on us, and yeah. we had like he had like nothing. So he brought me on. We wrote the entire script, recorded it, edited it, music, everything, on the air in what about eight days, something yeah. like that. Like it was, it was crammed, but it was so well worth it. It really was. I don't feel, I don't feel like we overworked our show. No, I don't think so either. And I'm, and I'm glad, and I'm glad we didn't work on it uh, the day of because interesting story, the the night of the 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 first airing, it aired three times, three times over the Christmas season. Yeah. Uh, oh, Chris, Christmas weekend, um, my power was out. For like thirty hours, oh, yeah, some right. some 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 idiot downstairs yeah. had 
cut down a tree and knock the power lines out. And out here where I was, or where I am, it was the coldest Christmas, I think, since 1989. Like, it was cold. Like, the high was like five degrees. Five degrees Fahrenheit. We made it work, and... We made it work. I, sur- I survived I survived that blackout. <laughs> I'm still here. Uh, um, I've, gone through, through, I've gone through similar experiences, but that's for a whole nother. Yeah, thing. I've I've yeah right. I've gone I've gone through I've gone through similar on the opposite side of the year, but that's and that's then, another story. And then, and then after that, I brought you on there, but yeah. Yep. Yeah. So like so so I guess it was kind of like my I I wouldn't say an audition I guess, but in a sense it kind of was. Maybe I don't know. But yeah, back to what I was saying, like that was him him firing me was I couldn't get hired after that. So I said, you know what? I so I woke up at three in the morning because I was drinking way too much Mountain Dew the night before. Uh-huh. It sounds like a punchline, but it really happened. Um and all I had was the name. I didn't know what it was. All we knew, I wanted to make something called the DJ Bob too. Not a podcast. Right. Like it wasn't a you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There wasn't even yeah, a, I an idea. So then three weeks later I launched it and it was from 3 to 7 p.m., five days a week, live. And I took the 3 to 7 idea from Radio KOL. That was his airship. And Rick was your first guy. Wow. Wow. That's wonderful. So now, absolutely. So, was there like a specific moment where you realized, hey, you know, this thing that I'm doing could become something big? Um, yeah. And it's very trivial for some, but you'll appreciate it. So, the interesting part about the show. Is as I was doing this show, yeah, I had those two months in the summer, but other than that, I had to juggle school too. Mm-hmm. And I was in my freshman year of high school, or going into my freshman year. And at some point in December of that year, I booked one of my first interviews. And one of my first interviews was the guy that sang Grandma Got Run run Over by a Reindeer. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) And that man man was the nicest guy I ever met at the time because I'm new at the time, a couple months in, and I'm still super fanboy. My voice is up here. And it's like, <laughs> like, but that was the moment. It's like, I can reach out to people and I could talk to them. But then, but then on the flip side of that, aside from, you know, Dr. Elmo, that's his name. Yeah. I was, I was interviewing rock bands, like. One of my favorites was All Star Weekend. We got to talk. To- oh yeah, I remember those guys. Sure. And we got to talk to John Morris, the voice of Andy from Toy Story. Well, yeah, we yeah we did that. But then in 2012, I started getting a little nostalgic for a certain bear in a big blue house. Oh, yes. And I reached out to Noel. And we do, we do this interview at 9.30 at night, and it doesn't wrap until 11. 11.30. Oh, my gosh. 
And I am super fanboy. She went, oh my god, can you do the voice? Like, really? Like, that? Everything I hate about people now... Uh-huh. It's what you used to do. Uh-huh. What you used to do. Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Because, I mean, you know... Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, I think Noel was actually the first big interview I did for your show. Or one of the first. Yeah. The Ujwin and I the the format of the show that you were on was very similar to this. Mm-hmm. But well, or and I don't think it's your fault, but definitely more clustered, I'd say. Because our I mean our show used to be too. Yeah. But without yeah. Yeah. Without revealing the politics, you know, now things are different. Yeah, I mean, and we every show has their set of politics. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so Noel was really sort of the catalyst to kind of go back into the nostalgic angle and talk to people from Playhouse Disney and. Just the children's language. Because I, I've also realized that the content is great, but they're also just the nicest people you could ever meet. Oh, you, oh yeah, I love that guy. Yes. Anybody in that children's landscape, there are very few people, with the exception of a couple, that really love what they do and really love their work enough to talk about it. Yeah. That's so true. It's interesting how, you know, both of our shows have changed over the years. And it really is. Yes. And I'm, yeah. Now, now going off that, how does it feel that your show, the DJ Bob show, has been going on for almost 13 years? Like, that's that's just mind-blowing. I know. Like, 13 years is like, 13 years? Is long, like, what? 13 years is a long time to do just about anything, you know? So... And yeah, it, it was, how does it feel that your show's, you know, been going on for this long and still going strong to this day? It feels really strange. Yeah. yeah I bet, yeah. Because, I could tell. Because when I started doing this show, I was just doing it for fun. And now I get emails from people saying that your show gets me through a hard time or helps me through depression or gives me a better outlook on life. That's not what I intended to do. I didn't have any sort of And the fact that I could be a voice for people that don't have one, that's everything to me. Mm. That's absolutely. We, we've gotten, you know, messages similar to that, too. Like, uh, and, and I mean, even, even, sure. even for people we've been, been. Yeah, even people we've interviewed say, you know, hey, you know, doing this kind of made me remember things I've forgotten about for so many years. You know, and yeah, just here, you know, thank you for what you do. What you're doing is amazing. From guests, from people who who we grew up watching, you know, mm-hmm. like like um, Allison Bartlett, for example. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> Jennifer Barnes with Jennifer yeah, Jennifer Barnes. Barnes. Jennifer Barnhart's actually a perfect example because she, yes. you know, became, you know, a fan of our show. Like, yeah. She listens, she listens to our interviews every now and again. She's a huge fan of our show. Yeah. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, <laughs> hi, hi Jennifer. Oh, yeah. And, hi. And, and, and definitely Philip Wilcher. Philip Wilcher, yes. Oh, he, 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 Seriously, you Yeah, and and Leslie Carey Rudolph too. Oh, and when, when, when we when yes. we when we had her on just Bob recently, Bradley. um, she even said like, it, uh, words can't describe it honestly, but you know, like the magic of friendship, like, and the positive side of what we were doing, you know, the way. Oh yeah, or she said, you know, it, and the, it's like, and the goal and the goal of what we do. We don't have the intention of, oh, I, I'm not a disability advocate. 
I, you know this, I, I hate that. But if I, right. I can change people's perspective about people with disabilities, that we could be nerds and that we can create and that we can enjoy things. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to do. I know. Like, in yeah. the, for people who may not think that way, you know, people should know, you know, you can learn a lot from people regardless, you know, if they have a disability or not. I mean, again, I've learned so much from Bob. It's extraordinary. Oh, yeah. Same year. Yeah, I just you know, feel like I, I just try to be the podcast that is a safe space for people. Exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah and this too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, you know, it goes to show, you know, hey, we don't have, you know, it's not, it comes to a point where, like, we don't have any goals about why we're doing this. There is so many reasons. We just have fun with it. Where we do, where we, we, we do, that's what we, you know, we have, yeah. have fun. We we enjoy what we do. Absolutely, and you know, exactly. I, the thing about both our podcasts really is we're not like you know your average you know just question and answer kind of podcast. You know, we act we have chats with our with our guests, and you know, in the beginning of our podcast, we kind of struggled with that a little bit just because we were starting out. But I think. I I remember Stephanie DeBruzzo being the first guest where we really started to have like chats with guests and I I no, I, I absolutely agree, agree with that. that. Yes. Yeah, that that I think was the first one, at least on our show. That kind of felt like a conversational type of show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I and you know this, Chris. I and I say this, but I'm gonna say it here because you were there. I never used I never used to talk about my disability on the pod. Yeah. Right. Right. Eight. But look where it's got. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gotten you doing, like, press interviews. Press. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you've done press for some really amazing things. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. For, you know, for Boost Big City Adventure. Uh, the the new uh, I was really uh, angry. The new uh, Snow Day remake. Snow Day, yeah. Oh yeah, That's right. That um, yes. A lot of yeah, you yeah, you've gotten a lot of wonderful Many opportunities. And, it, and in a roundabout way, it's how I met my fiance too. So yes, recently <laughs> engaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it really changed my life in so many different ways and I'm so grateful that I'm not hiding that part of me because that's not that's not authenticity at all. Exactly. Right. You know like what you say, you know, when you talk when you talk more about your disability, they compare, you know, we didn't do that at first, you know, people just, you know, not just, you know, respect what you're doing, but like the kindness of what they're showing to you and it's just, just like oh my gosh it's just like it's just amazing what people like thinks about you especially after their conversation with you you know yeah it, I mean, it's just wonderful i mean yeah. getting getting to interview bill beretta recently yes and oh yeah. ma- and making him cry Yes. Because that, of what I said, like, you can't make that up. I know, and similar to us when we interviewed Leslie, you know, we even made her cry kind of towards the end. Yeah. yeah. When we brought up how it was Matt's 100th, and... Yeah, yeah. I... You know, this is what it's all about, you know? Like, yeah, like like I've said, I, I, I think you, I'm pretty sure it was pure coincidence that that episode was was my 100th, but I couldn't have asked for a better guest. You know, I I've admired Leslie's work for so many years. You know, as Gene General Johnny and the Sprites, of course, Abby Cadabby and Tango on Sesame Street, and uh, you know, it, it just a yeah. whole bunch of things. It is it was a dream come true for me personally, for all of yeah. us really, but for. For yeah. me, and uh, I, I, I also do remember when uh, speaking of people, 
and a proud moment. I, I remember Jennifer Barnhart's episode going back to her episode real quick. And uh, we were talking about uh, the We Are Family video. Uh, Jennifer had brought up. Mm -hmm. there, um, there was a scene which I don't think made the final cut. But I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was Cleo, Leona, and Telly. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they were on it, and they were on a boat. And uh, she showed us this beautiful, beautiful picture of uh, Cleo. And I think Marty Robinson, I think, right? If I remember correctly. Somebody. And uh, and they were doing their all little nosy, nosy, nosy. I think it was Marty Robinson, I think. Uh, and, and Marty was like, was like, uh, trying to do like tell he's like I don't even know what a nosy 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 is what am yeah. I supposed to do and it, it made her laugh like, yeah that's that's a proud that's moment so funny yeah uh, like that's yeah like like that's that's a proud moment you know it really is I don't I don't most people don't think of it as, like that but I I definitely do as a puppeteer somebody's I've watched her and many others on TV for many years that's a very proud oh, yeah for me yeah, I, I I have Wyatt Jalen as well. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. number two. Definitely. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I remember, cause I remember, like you mentioned something, and then Wyatt Jalen, I mean, Wyatt just like started laughing or something. Mm -hmm. Where I remembered, yeah, but I forgot yeah. what I forgot what's about. But mm -hmm. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll have to go back and watch that one. I don't know that was. But yeah. Yeah. A lot of, and and I know there's no one about that. I know uh, you. You've told me plenty of times before, Bob. Like you don't. When you bring up your disability, I know you said you don't really bring up your disability. You didn't bring it up at all for many years. But you know, you're not. You're not trying to change people's minds, right? Per se, you know, like. But, I guess, kind of more of an understanding of who you are. So to speak, I guess. Yeah. Does that does that sound right? Yeah, because there is a view of people with disabilities that, not to be all philosophical and deep, but we're all mm -hmm. friends here. Um, yes. Yeah. When people see someone with a disability, they think that we are changed, meaning that we are. Put together that we're perfect, that we're the golden child. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. We yeah, have we have problems, we have dreams, we have aspirations. Yeah. And we can do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. No no organization. This isn't gonna make a wish. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all I'm about to mention. No, yeah. no, no. I built this. From being a nerd, you know, oh, yeah. and the same 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 goes for, for Chris and Jakey. They built them up from being nerds. I joined a couple months later. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and here, here we are. Yeah. Here, here we are. Second, two years yeah. later, second anniversary. Yes. So, yeah. Wow. They're two years. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> right? No. You know, it's it just like uh, uh, going back to Allison Barlow. Even she said to us, like, I want to ask you guys questions. Yeah. <laughs> I I really do think uh turnaround episode may be in the works. I I feel I think I think that'd be so fun. I think we we should bring a guest back and then have them ask questions. And that's why I always uh, that would be so why, fun. That's why I always bring up do you have any questions for me? Exactly. Yeah. In my yeah, hair. exactly. Yes. Well, I mean, I guess you know it would be a, an appropriate time to ask. Do you have any <laughs> questions for us? <laughs> I do. You know, oh, that's a nice segment. That's oh nice my god. To... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are you here? No. Um. Just I, I, um <laughs> well. <laughs> so um. So we are got. So uh. Oh, well, uh here's the guys. We are well. Well, we have microphones and uh, we have Zoom, so that's why we're here. <laughs> okay, so my question for you guys is, and this is not a self-indulgent thing, but I've never asked you this. How have I 
inspired you guys specifically this show? So, well, because like you said, the format of our show is kind of similar to how, you know, we used to do your show. I think now I won't, you know, bring up names or anything, but certain right. interviews kind of taught me how to kind of be professional in, the, in that kind of a setting, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and even another thing is because, you know, when your podcast was more nostalgia centric, you've had newer people on as well. And the good thing about that with us is, you know, now when we have newer people on, like, for example, when we interviewed uh, Bradley Freeman Jr. and Chris Thomas Hayes, uh, you know, they're, you know, newer puppeteers, but, you know, we asked them kind of, we still kind of kept the nostalgia thing going, asking them like, you know, what was your familiarity with the Muppets? You know, did you grow up watching, you know, all these, you know, okay. I mean, I'm just so happy that you guys are doing something and doing it well, because there are so many podcasts that podcast because they feel like they have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Because of, you know, you just, there's some podcasts out there, like hosts can be so, so a fanboyish that they, you know, they, yeah. they, they really want to do it because of that sp- specifically that person, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're not like that, you know? We're just, you know. No, no, no. You no. should want to. Chad, like we're, and there's reasons why we're doing this, you know. There's a podcast that I worked on. I'm not going to mention the name mm-hmm. of it, but um, it got to the point where I was doing more of the work than the host was. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could see that. And that's because they were super fanboy about who the guest was, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Mind you. Bingo and Chris and some like Jakey, you're on the, you're on the, you're in the trenches with me. You're with me when I get email. I get excited all the time. Yep. Oh yeah, and too. Yeah. When, so do we. So do we. But right. when, but when the mics are on, you gotta dial that back. Yes. Ab- absolutely. 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 Don't, don't, don't be. You know. Oh my god, I'm vibing. Did you like? No, yeah. don't do don't do that. <laughs> like, what, what, I mean, why? I mean, yes, yes, you can be excited beforehand, but once that record oh, button starts, oh, no. dial it back, dial it back. And there will be times, you know, where you get excited over certain things, but you got to always make yeah. sure to keep it on a professional level. Oh, yes, like, absolutely. Oh, the other thing, uh, on my couple of episodes, if you guys know what I'm talking about. What what is the episode? I know it's the episode. One of the episodes where that came through for me was Cheryl Chase. Oh, yeah. When I interviewed her. I was <laughs> excited, and she knew I was excited. But that created a great conversation because she knew I was a genuine fan. Right. So the, the, when, the, right. Your way to be so, a fan oh, Yeah. Your uh-huh. way to be a fanboy without being a fanboy. Yeah, right. I, I was just gonna say, there's a major difference between being, you know, a genuine fan versus the two fan of fanboyish. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, exactly. I Ram- you know, it's fanboyish. I guess, I guess the better way to put it is, there's a difference between admiring the person you work and being a straight up fanboy. Yes, exactly. Yes, there, there's a, there's definitely a huge difference. Now, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm now that now that I wonder about it. How do you, how do you tell the difference between a genuine fan and a fanboy? Like, I'm. How do I do it? Yeah, or, or really just in general. I mean, it doesn't even have to be with with podcasting. It'd be like outside of podcasting because, you know, not everybody does a podcast. Most people do, but some people don't. You know. Oh, you could tell just like, by the way you could tell by just by the way they talk. 
Because you could be a fan of something without asking them to do the voice. Oh my god, yeah. Now, I used to be a fanboy. To the point where I wouldn't sleep the night before the interview. Because I was so excited. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Because it was such this foreign thing. Like, wow, I'm talking to someone that I watched. But then you do yeah. a couple. Then you do it a couple more times, and it's like they're just people, and they happen to do something that we really like. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's and there's and there's your lesson for the day. Class dismissed. <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> now we've we've discussed this earlier. Over the years, a lot has changed with your show. Uh, the DJ Bob show format, the discussions have been kind of on a more personal level. Yeah. Not just, not just, you know, the nostalgia type thing, but it's also gotten from a deeper personal level and so on. Yeah. And then what, you, like podcast equipment, you know, uh, oh, oh, definitely, that pod- yeah. oh, definitely, well, definitely, that. definitely podcast, but in what ways would you say that your show has evolved with such a long run? I feel like I love this show more now than I than I did even when Chris was working on it because it's authentically me. Right. I mean one of the one of the core moments was having Sydney on last year for her birthday. I wouldn't have done that year ago. You know? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I would have kept her like silent, but I wanted people to know my life. And my fault but- did too. Um I uh, I wanted people to understand that I'm Bob. I'm not just DJ Bob, and I have a life. I have feelings. I, you know, I I've done I've done my best to implement the personal stuff too. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so let's talk about you know what's what's next in store for you and for the DJ Bob show. Well, so what's coming up? There's a lot. Um, I mean, today we've got a pretty amazing episode dropping. It's, it's with, I guess I can say it, because it'll probably be out by the time this is going on. Yeah. Uh, the tables have turned again, this time with Stephanie DeBruzzo. Ah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes few years and honestly I haven't told anybody this I was going to quit after our 10th really wow I mean I mean to be fair 10 years with anything is a really long time you know I, I said what more do I have to give right mm-hmm. and then and you're still doing it then interviews happen and then Fresh things happen, and you're like, oh, this is why. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. I, I don't so. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon, so there's more mm-hmm. content coming. Awesome. Yay. Fantastic. Sausage yeah. to hear. I'm looking forward. Yes, likewise. Of course, of course, of course. So what would you like to say to those who have you know, been follow your journey and support your show throughout all these years. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Because without, I remember when I started the show, I used to have to beg people to listen. And now, yeah. now I've become appointment listening for people. People get excited when a new episode drops. Mm -hmm. And people genuinely love what we do and think, like, I'm one of the, I 
I really feel like my podcast is the first of its kind where it is homegrown, but it's got this professional approach too. And right. the, the growing and the learning and all that stuff that we've talked about wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for for all of you advocating from those early days or even a recently like three or four years ago so thank you absolutely you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome bob so if people would like to connect with you where can people find you or as well as uh finding the dj bob show episodes they can head to djbombshow.com they can follow me on Twitter just by searching the DJ Bob Show or DJ Bob Runkle. That's D J B O B R U N K E L. Follow me on Instagram at DJ Bob Show Podcast or at Runkstagram for my personal account with all fun stuff and, you know, that, all that stuff. I'm everywhere find me yeah yeah your, your your website your social will be in the description down below yes so now to end this off and you've asked you've even asked this question once in an interview um when you surprise a guest so the last question that matt's about to ask of course is the question we ask all of our guests at the end take it away matt yep my turn to ask you this question so of course this podcast is called jake's happy nostalgia show when you think of nostalgia what do you think of? Or in your own words, how do you define the word nostalgia? I think of um, uh, well I'm getting a lot of thoughts in there. I think of innocence and times gone by and Times that can't be replicated. But with stuff like what I do and what you do, it can be replicated. And to wrap this up, I'd like to share a quick story in regard of course, to nostalgia and how it impacts. Of course. Me. Um, so in July of 2001, um, uh, Rugrats did a 10-year anniversary special where the babies go to the future and they see them just all grown up. They'll come to lead into the series. Right? Right. Yep. Now, mm -hmm. I was I was just graduating from a school for kids with disabilities and you know what? I was going into public school for the first time, meeting all these new people back September. But I remember watching it on that July 21st, 2001, with my Carvel ice cream and sitting on the couch with my mother. So every year on July 21st, and Chris knows to keep been there. I watched that premiere broadcast with the ice cream that I had back then. Oh my gosh. Wow. wow. Just to feel that again. So, nostalgia really is about feeling what was once there. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. We were sent off. Thank you very much. Share that, us, Bob. Got it. Appreciate it. Well, Bob, you know, thank you for coming back. You know, it's always, you know, I mean, even though we've been friends for a while, it is really always a pleasure, you know, talking to you. Whether yes. it's, you know, Absolutely. helping you out with stuff or just, you know, general chats about things. Yes. Oh, I'll be back in two weeks. <laughs> okay, then we're gonna keep on doing it. Good. Is that, yes. that's good to uh, and this, this is not the this is not the last one we're gonna do it. And um, and I know, oh, no. and I know, Chris. I know you both, Chris and Matt. We're both gonna say same thing. What I'm about to say, you know, 
to, you know, since we're about to end this very soon, you know, Bob, you know, thank you very much for, you know, for, for, you know, for what you, what you've done for not just, you know, three of us to become, you know, great friends with you, but as well for like for what your show has been for so long and for what, and, you know, Jake's having the star show is now, you know, like what Chris said, I'm not too sure what this podcast would be if it if it wasn't for you, Bob. So I know Chris said I know Chris said but don't make them cry now. But thank you. No, no. We're we're serious about that, man. Congratulations. Congrats. Big big congrats on your thirteenth anniversary. Yes. Um of course thirteen as we said earlier, thirteen years is a long time for anything. But a podcast no, like like a podcast running thirteen years has gotta show. be it's definitely the lo- the longest running, at least I know of. Oh, same here. And it, same and, it year. and 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 you know what? And you know what? It it definitely shows. You know, you've been an inspiration to so many people uh, throughout the years, ourselves included. And uh, we're we're just we're just really proud of you. Congratulations on thirteen years. It's it's amazing. It's all about paying. It's all about paying it forward. If I could do something for you, and you could do something for the next budding podcaster then we've all done our job absolutely exactly exactly but yeah if you got boy you've gone all these years and for you still doing this and you know it's just it's just wonderful yes yeah and thank, and thank you all out there for tuning in to another episode of jake's happiness out show we absolutely enjoyed our time yes. having dj bob runkle back on yay yes 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 and we've got lots more episodes for our Yes, congrats. We we still have a couple more episodes for our anniversary month. Yes. Um, our, 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 our anniversary. Lots, lots of fun surprises, so yes. stick around all wow. month long. Uh, everyone. Um, we've we've only got, like, what, three episodes left this uh, this month for our anniversary? Uh, but they are going to be going to be amazing episodes. We hope you've enjoyed the yeah. previous ones so far, including uh, yes. Sun Oil. Uh, some yeah. other fun stuff which you've seen already, but we've got lots more for our for our anniversary as Absolutely. well. So please, please stay tuned. If you're not on YouTube, go subscribe. Um, that's where our video version is. And, 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 yeah. and if you prefer, and, and if you prefer audio, you know you can find us on Spotify. Yeah, uh, you can find us on Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, a whole bunch of other places. Um, our link I drew on on on. Yeah, our link, our link tree. You can find that in the descriptions of uh, some of our of our interviews, so you can find pretty much every place you can find our show. And follow and follow us too, because uh, yes. we're a pattern too. Yes, up yes. Well, yep. you know, again, this brings another episode of Jake's Happy Sound Show to a close. But as always, what do we say, Jake? Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. See ya. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.